And we're back. I'm Professor Scott Plum with the Minnesota Sales Institute. And with me is Bill Hellcamp of Reach Development Systems. We all know that product knowledge is important. After all, we don't want to go into an appointment and not know what we're talking about. But the most accomplished salespeople go beyond knowing about their product to knowing about the industry. In this way, they can bring new and valuable information to their customers. So sit back with your favorite beverage as Scott and I discuss becoming an industry expert and much more on episode 447 of the Get in the Door podcast. For those of you that are playing along at home, I'm grateful that Peter Beaumont sat in for last week's session. Thank you, Peter. And, uh, and Bill, thanks for um, doing the audible at the, uh, the 11th hour. On um, Tuesday, I was called to the uh, bedside of my best friend who is leaving us. And uh, on Wednesday morning, when we usually record the podcast, I got a chance to say goodbye to Tom Winninger. And he passed away. Thursday at about 5.30, and uh, he was my mentor, my closest friend, my spiritual leader, uh, and I'm grateful that he is, uh, I'm joyful, I'm joyful that he is with the Lord, and he is spending eternity with the Father, and um, it's... Tom, Tom was a great guy. Uh, I can hear the emotion in your voice, yeah, Scott. Thank and, you. And uh, the only time I got a chance to meet Tom was uh, when he spoke for PSA last January, and... Uh, Everything he said was full of emotion and energy mm. and truth and belief in everything that he did. And that's that was my lasting impression was somebody who yeah. spoke the truth and believed in the truth. Thank you. Yeah, he was. He was a great leader. He's going to leave a tremendous void. And as I said on my LinkedIn page, it's a void that only can be filled with the faith of a fair and just God. And uh that's what I believe. And, and that's what he believes. And if you want to learn more about Tom Winninger, you can Google his name, go to winninger.com and you'll be able to see a lot of videos and to see the impact that he made on my life. And you're willing to, you're, you're willing to adopt him as having an impact on your life. I know that your life will, will never be the same after you see some of his videos. So, and that's the nice thing these days about video and audios and the work that we do is that can live on beyond us and still continue to impact people uh, if it's true and it's just and it's and it's valued. Yeah, so it's a, it's a real bittersweet when you get a chance to say goodbye to somebody. And I don't know if our, any of our listeners have had a chance to do that, but it's it's a, it's a challenging um, event. And that they're, they're, when you leave that hospital room, that's the last time you're going to see them. That's mm -hmm. the last time you're going to talk to them. And it's final. Yeah. It's final here on earth. It's not final in uh, eternity with the Lord. Right. Amen. Right. So, Amen. And so you'll put some information about that they can link to on our site. Yeah. 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 Go, go to the website, get into our podcast dot um, com, and you'll be able to have a link uh, to, to Tom's um, information. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. So our book club today, we're going to get into chapter four from Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz, and the title is Dehypnotize Yourself from False Beliefs. And this is such an important part of our role as salespeople is really understanding our beliefs. I heard the, uh, I was listening to another podcast, and they said that some people uh, measure a person's value on the input. Um, and the input is the degrees that they have behind their name or the education that they have. And then some people value the output, which is the productivity, the results, the impact that they make on the marketplace or mm. their lives or the company. And I, and I just thought, you know, this is so important. The input is always our beliefs and we need to really manage the input. And I think I've said this on, on previous episodes is that we never, you know, my motto is never let anything into your life. You wouldn't let into your child's life. Right. And when you really manage the beliefs that you have and are conscious of them, that's a little bit, you know, more about what they talked about in this chapter is being conscious about our beliefs. It's, easier for us to be able to manage our behavior. So input is belief, output is behavior. And if we can just think about that, I think we're going to be able to be more conscious about what we do and what we don't do. But what do you think? Well, I, you know, he talks about being hypnotized and I, that didn't really resonate with me uh, as much yeah. as brainwashed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been accused of being brainwashed because of the books I read. I've been accused of, be, of brainwashing people in my classes. You're just trying <laughs> to make us think one way. Right. And, I, right. and, and, 
I've always thought, yeah, you know, you're going to either be brainwashed for success or you're going to be brainwashed for failure. Mm -hmm. You get to make the choice. And if you sit around and you watch TV and even cable TV or almost all TV and making no choices, getting watching commercials, uh, listening to other people's values, you are going to be brainwashed in a certain area. And I think you can even look at our society and the way TV and media brainwashes people to be less than what they are. Uh, let me tell you a quick story. When mm -hmm. my son was young, uh, my oldest son, uh, he was the only one that went to regular school. He went to first grade, but we were talking to the teacher and she said, uh, your son doesn't watch TV, does he? And I said, well, no, we don't watch a lot of TV with him. I said, how do you know that? She said, well, when all the other boys play, they like to kick each other like the Power Rangers. He mm. said, but your son doesn't really seem to know how to do that. And wow. those kids were being brainwashed just by the Power Rangers. Now, there's nothing mm. wrong necessarily mm -hmm. with the Power Rangers. But when we watch things and we, we put those things are going into our brain, you talked about that. Right. Uh, the old computer term, Geigo, garbage in, garbage out. If you're going to fill your brain with stuff, it's going to come out. James Allen in his book, As a Man Thinketh, says that you cannot be one thing within and act a different way without. Yeah. Uh, one of the lines that Tom Winninger always said is every time he does a class or a seminar, he said, you know, I'm always right. And people would look at him <laughs> like, you know, what do you mean? He said, no, I'm always right. And if, if you want to not think that I'm right, then prove me wrong. Right. And, and he would send people you know, packing. And what would happen is they would spend probably 10 times the amount of time studying something that Tom said, and then they'd come back and they'd either agree with him or they'd come up with something better. Right. Well, <laughs> hallelujah. Well, who wins on that one? Right. <laughs> you know, the right. person who studies it and comes back with something even better than what Tom said. Uh, another thing that Tom said that uh, I, I really try to incorporate in my life is that Dr. Stephen Covey talked about the slices of a pie and, uh, you know, a man cannot do good in one area and bad in another. And that's, that's from the book as a man thinketh, but Stephen Covey would have a slice of the pie saying, you know, here's your faith. Here's, you know, those life wheel, we've seen this too. And here's your faith. And, and Tom Winninger would say, it's, you know, your faith is not a slice of the pie. It is the whole pie mm -hmm. is your faith. And everything that you do is built on your faith. It is your identity and is, right. it is your character. It's like saying we only put sugar in that one piece and one slice of pie. Right. Yeah. It's not yeah. throughout the pie there. Yeah. I, I heard one great example was uh, when people say, well, I just watch a little bit of bad TV. You know, mm. I just watch pornography once oh, in a while. Right. Terrible. And they said, well, why don't you eat these brownies? I, I only put a little bit of poop in them. Yeah. It's only a little bit. So, but, so don't worry about it. It's overall, it's, you know, not hardly any of the brown, wow. but you just go ahead and, and eat those. And why would we not eat, you know, brownies with a little bit of poop in them? Oh. And yet we'll watch a little bit of bad TV or listen sure. to a little bit of vulgar jokes. I have that people, when I started speaking in public, I had to quit listening to my friends, vulgar jokes because gosh, darn it. They're funny sometimes. And, mm -hmm. and I would find that kind of thinking would come out publicly. Right. Exactly. I couldn't again, James Allen, you can't be one thing in your mind and then present a different thing. So right. we do have to wash some of that stuff out by putting better things in. You've got to unpickle the pickle. So what did he say about how do we do this? Well, some of the lines that I took out of the chapter and highlighted, one of them is my experience with other patients had shown that physical change does not always guarantee personal change. And again, we're coming from a plastic surgeon's perspective. Right, and he right. found that when he changed somebody physically, they didn't change their personality. So that was really the difference between their, their physical being and their personality. Another line that I highlighted was just as quickly as you can be dehypnotized from the idea of I can't, I'm not worth it, or I don't deserve it. You can with other self-limiting ideas. Mm -hmm. And we can really talk negatively to ourselves. 85% of our self-talk is negative. And, right. and there's a book, I think, what to say when you talk to yourself. Um, and, and really, and, and again, we have to really manage the input. That's why affirmations are so powerful yeah. is when we have affirmations all of our life and we've got reminders about what we want to do and what our goals are. And we follow that and we continue to drill that into our head. Then right. we end up 
exercising it in our behavior. And we have to say those things out loud because mm, right. we, we can't let our brain, you know, I'm a great salesman. I mean, no, you're not, right? If we say it mm. silently to ourselves, but if we say it out loud, we won't say those negative counters to those affirmations that we're trying to make. So that's that's hypnotizing yourself, right, with those affirmations. Now, Scott, one of the talk, things he talks about was inferiority complexes. How, how does that come about? I, one thing that I highlight is that it doesn't come from too much facts or experiences, but the conclusions regarding the facts and our evaluations of the experiences. So we so misevaluate things? We, we do. We misinterpret it. We, we misfile it. We take a bad perception, perspective mm. of it, and it, it, it skews to the negative versus skewing to the to the, the the positive. I'm, I'm going to share one more thing that Tom Winninger shared with me. Is, okay. and, and this is so powerful is when bad things happened, he never said, why is this happening to me? He never mm. said, why God is this right. happening to me? He would always say, dear Lord, what am I to learn from this? Right. And every time something bad happens to me, my first reaction, and it's an emotional reaction, it's not an intellectual response, it's an emotional reaction is, dear Lord, what am I to learn from this? And it is amazing the answers that I come up with. You know, Mark Twain had a saying that uh, once a cat sits on a hot stove lid, he'll never sit on a hot stove lid again. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. he'll never sit on a cold one either. Right. And that's what he's trying to say. Sometimes we learn the wrong lesson Mm -hmm. just because I was, you know, I was burned once doesn't mean I should never do that thing again. I just, and maybe I need to find a different way to do it. And I find that so often with people as we're teaching them, they, they don't, they try something new once it doesn't work. And so they give that thing up. They jettison a good idea because they miscast it once or did it in the wrong situation. So don't learn wrongly from your experience try to really think it through How, did i really do this the right way could i do this better could i improve could i what can i learn from this i want to add just one more thing and i've said that more than once during this episode but <laughs> one of the things that he talked about in the in this chapter was making an effort to restrain from a habit actually reinforces the habit uh, and it's so powerful. I, I talk to so many people. They say, well, I, you know, I have to really think about not doing that. And I go, well, you're really drawing it towards you every time yeah. you think about it. And think about the times you try to diet and all you can think about is food. Yeah. And, it, and it's not about not eating junk food. It's about eat, committing to eating healthy food. Right. It's not about avoiding sin. It's about practicing virtue. And, and, and now you're, you're practicing virtue. And, and with that, you're avoiding sin from your life. And, and it's just a different emphasis. So concentrate on the positive instead of concentrating on the negative and trying to avoid the negative, you end up attracting it. You look right. for it. Great point. This segment has been brought to you by the Jumpstart Sales Coaching Program presented by your host of Get Into Door Podcast. Business is heating up and now is the time to get back on the selling track. While others wait for the market to improve, prospects and opportunities await you now. Perhaps you want to be more productive on your prospecting or you'd like to increase your closing percentage. Maybe having meetings online is not as comfortable as being in person. Sales reps are telling us they need some honest accountability and skill development to rise above the competition. Whatever your reason, this is the perfect time to engage with an experienced sales coach. That is why the host of Get In The Door podcast, Professor Scott Plum and Bill Hellcamp have developed the Jumpstart Sales Coaching Program. For only $495, you can receive personal coaching from the same sales professionals you enjoy on this podcast. It all starts with a discussion to give us your insights into your specific goals, challenges, needs, and motivation. After your one-hour online session to jumpstart your coaching process, you will receive five more half-hour individual coaching sessions to enable you to make improvements over time and create new habits. Most salespeople make their money back with just one sale. Go to GetInTheDoorPodcast.com to contact Bill or Scott about the Jumpstart Sales Coaching Program. Do you believe you deserve better results? Now is the time to invest in yourself and invest in your future. Well, our topic today is becoming an industry expert. And I put the word industry in there, uh, even though last week when we finished up, we said we're going to talk about becoming an expert. And then as I thought about that, um, I thought, well, maybe they'll think I mean a product expert. And mm. uh, I want to take it into a different direction, not just product, as I said in the opening, but uh, but uh, throughout the industry, uh, people are not looking for an empty suit. Somebody who just knows enough jargon to sound useful. 
Right. Uh, they want someone who's going to bring new ideas and give me something, improve my business, improve my life. Uh, they want to guide through the process, not somebody you have to guide. I, uh, my car, I got into a car accident just earlier this week. And so I was out looking for cars last night. And uh, the first place we went to, uh, we had a guy, uh, Tyson, a nice guy, listened to what we were saying, kind of guided us through a couple of cars. And, you know, and then I asked him a question and he, he answered it and dealt with it. And it was a pretty comfortable experience. We went to another car stop place and we got Brandon, a uh, nice guy, absolutely knew nothing, uh, didn't really, couldn't process what we were saying to guide us, right? So, mm. so. And then as we got into the one of the test drives with the wrong car that didn't meet our requirements, but we're like trying to get out of there. Um, uh, he said, uh, boy, I'm just, you know, I just started doing this. Uh, you know, Kathy and I both said later, yeah, it was apparent. And, and, and you know, no bang on him. He's trying mm -hmm. to learn his trade and, and you're going to make mistakes. And we were one of the mistakes uh, in that. But he didn't know enough to really guide us. He kind of kept guiding us in the wrong direction and talking about the wrong things and and he wasn't able to really have enough knowledge to listen and then in and guide yet mm -hmm. so so i think that's one of the things your thoughts on that i like being um a, a product knowledge is good it's important it helps salespeople gain confidence that's that's one of the good things the the bad thing about it learning product knowledge is once you start learning product knowledge you learn that you never learn enough. There's always something more to learn with product knowledge. And you start to go down into a black hole of everything that you want to learn about a particular product. I think it's also important to have market knowledge. And when you can come to a prospect and you're specializing, concentrating in an industry, and you can bring market knowledge, and I've used this term before with salespeople that I work with, I go, consider yourself a market ambassador. Mm -hmm. And you are bringing to the market a solution. Now, here's three things that you need to keep in mind when you're a market ambassador. Is you need to know what problems you're looking for. You need to know enough about your product to solve the problems. Enough. You don't need to be an expert on everything related to the specs of a product, but you need to be able to know enough to solve a problem. And you need to be able to know enough about the process of getting the product into the prospect's hands right. to solve a problem. Right. And like and you, you need like, to know how to tell time. You don't need to know how the watch is made. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. That's a great analogy, Bill. It's better said. Uh, and as Mark Twain said, if I would have written you a shorter letter, if I had more time, <laughs> Which I, I just scratched my head going, wow, that, that's so interesting. I hope that's your quote of the but, day. Yeah, but <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, Scott, great, great points. And I thought you're going to go in a different direction, which I wanted to make sure we talked about. And that is, uh, we don't want to spend so much time with product knowledge that we never learn how to be a better salesperson. I, I think we really have to understand there's, there's three values here. There's product knowledge, there's industry expertise, but we also need to spend our time becoming better at sales, which obviously is what this podcast is all about. Mm -hmm. So let's not let's not lose that balance right, as we right. talk about becoming an industry or expert or talk about product knowledge to say, okay, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. That's the mistake we see people making. All I know is my product, and now I can't do anything with it. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of salespeople, when I ask them the question, what is your goal when you meet a prospect? So, well, I really need to educate them. I, you know, and I go, oh, okay, well, tell me more about that. Well, I need to really educate them on our products and I really need to tell them about everything that we do. And, and, and I go, okay, that, that's really important. I said, is it possible for us to keep in mind that we are going to educate to influence and not educate to teach? Mm. We want to be able to apply what's most valuable in the solution, in our product to what's most valuable to the prospect with their problem. And if we don't have that contrast between the problem and the product, we're not going to be able to build value because value is the contrast between a product and a problem. Mm -hmm. The greater the contrast, the greater the value between the two. Right. So if, if we create a bigger problem and we create a bigger product to solve the problem, we got greater value. And that's right. something we need to keep in mind. Right. That's why I talk a lot about people too quickly going to a solution in their, right. in their conversations, then they solve a small problem instead of finding the real big one.
Yeah. So well, let's you- talk about the value of, of developing this industry expertise, and then mm. we'll talk about how to do that. So you talked about product knowledge, increasing the self-confidence of the sales professional. Mm-hmm. I, I think becoming more expertise in the whole industry also increases your self-confidence because you know you have more to talk about when you get into that conversation. You know, those people that you are your customers, they're involved in that industry every single day you may have three or four industries that you deal with. So Mm -hmm. uh, can you, can you develop enough expertise in those industries to become uh, efficient? That's why uh, some companies, they move their salespeople, not by a territory, but by an industry. True. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a, that's a good logic. I think we probably want to keep it three or under three industries that we want to concentrate on. I think about sales training. There are industry experts that do sales training and good and bad. Right. You know, and I've, and I've had a, a, a telecom company call me and say, you know, how many telecom people have you worked with? I go, well, let me think about it. I'm not, you know, I have to go back how many years I think, about it. I go, well, not a lot. You go, well, why should I hire you? If you have not ever worked in, in the telecom industry, I go, well, probably because the salespeople you send my way are not going to sound like all the other ones in the telecom right. industry or get the same information they've gotten from three other people. Yeah. And it just yep. sounds so insectuous is when all the salespeople from the telecom industry all sell the same and, and they all go from one com, you know, telecom company to another one, to right. another one, to another one. Right. Well, so, those are so, industry experts, but they all sound the same. Right, right. And so that's another value to bringing to the industry expertise or, or for you developing industry expertise is that you can bring more to the mm-hmm. customer conversation than you could bring if you didn't have that expertise. If you were only product oriented, you don't know what your competitors are doing. You don't know what's happening in the industry. Then all you got is product knowledge. But mm-hmm. now if I have industry expertise, I bring more to that customer conversation. And that's really what they talked about in the challenger sale. Exactly what I was going to say. Oh, I took it out of your mind. Oh, no, no, no. That's perfect, Bill. We're on the same page. <laughs> All I mean, right, the, good. The, 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 the challenger sales says, you know, as a salesperson, don't ask people what's keeping you up at night. Come to the conversation saying, here's what should be keeping you up at night. Right. Do you know these things are happening? Right. Yep. And, and that's really becoming that, that market expert, that market uh, industry knowledge expert in that area. So another value is that you start to become recognized in the industry. People start to know who you are not just as a sales professional, which is not a bad thing, but if they see you as a, a knowledgeable expert, right? Being that, that knowledgeable expert in the industry, uh, you have a lot more cachet. You have a lot more authority in those conversations. Right. So sell to your reputation. Think about three words, three keywords, just like a search engine optimization website is what are the keywords? Think about the three keywords that you want to be associated with. I have a good friend who specializes in franchises. His his nickname is Johnny Franchise. Mm. Anything you want to know about franchises, if you're the franchisee, you're the franchisor, you're thinking about buying a franchise, you want to know what you need to make a franchise right. successful you call Johnny Johnny franchise <laughs> so you'll gravitated to him when you have that need right right that's the key word that's what you think about every time somebody mentions a franchise oh have you talked to Johnny franchise and that takes me to number four you're going to attract more prospects just as Scott talked about but you're also going to shorten the closing cycle because yeah. I don't have to convince you that I know anything I don't have to convince you that what I'm saying is valid all I have to, that's already been done because you see me as an industry expert. You're coming to me for that expertise. And now we have a much shorter closing cycle, a much shorter sales cycle because the value is already built up in me as an individual. Right. And in the future, you're going to be able to attract more referrals from a perfect fit prospect because you're concentrating on specific industry. There you go. And you're going to be able to add more value. You're going to be more competitive in competitive situations. And like Bill said, shorten sales cycle, increase the closing ratio, maintain a greater profit margin too. You have to continue to sharpen your saw. Just because you arrived at focusing on an industry and you've arrived doesn't mean that you're going to be able to survive unless you continue to invest in learning more and more and more about the the market, but the changes in the industry, and to be able to share that information freely with people and be known for a person who's going to share information freely. So every time somebody has a question, who do they call? They call you first. Right. So how do you become this industry expert? One of the things I'd say is join industry groups, Mm -hmm. online and physical. Uh, There's a lot of groups on LinkedIn. I I know that physical groups aren't as physical anymore, but they're still active as Scott and I with PSA and SME are both active, even though we're not meeting physically, 
Uh, we're doing virtual things. So you can find those organizations. What are they doing virtually? Join them and don't be a passive member. It doesn't do you any good to join an organization and then never contribute. So that's what Scott's talking about. Are you contributing freely to those organizations? Can you get on the board? of those organizations and become active in those? Can you ask questions on the, the LinkedIn page? Can you offer advice and answer questions for other people? So join some kind of industry group and get active on those industry groups. Great advice. Uh, number two, read. Mm. I know that's uh, it's becoming a lost art, but read books, magazines, newsletters. You don't have to read 50 hours a day. You read 15 minutes a day, and you'll continue to grow and build that knowledge base that will help you answer questions and help you recognize what are the industry challenges that you can help answer and you can provide answers for with your product or service. Attend the latest talks. Who's, who's out there talking about your industry? Even though we've gone away from the, the live shows that we used to do, those people are still talking. They're doing TED Talks. They're talking online. They're doing webinars. And so find, find out who's doing those talks. Are, are you, do you attend those kind of things, Scott? I do. I try to always sign up for talks. And then if something changes, I, I might have to cancel. But there's something to do in my calendar. I've got my time is full. And I will sign up for talks. And now with everything being virtual, it's easy for me to be able to do a search on the internet, look at different websites when it comes to different um, activities, different Zoom talks and, and sign up for them. And, yeah, and a lot more is free than it used to be. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So there's also blogs and you can use Google Alerts. I use Google Alerts and put in certain keywords and Google Alerts. And when something triggers that, I end up getting notified of it and I can learn a little bit more about it. Excellent. Uh, we can still ask our clients for tours of their factories or plants. I love going on plant tours. Mm, I love finding out what's going on. I love talking to the guys that are grinding and drilling and building and making uh, the men and women that are in those factories. Man, do they know what's going on? I, I can't tell you the number of times I've gone into a factory and found out stuff that the leadership won't tell me about. And uh, then we can then we can help them answer that. So uh, go on those factory tours. Do you like do you enjoy going on those? I do, I, and I, it's always interesting to kind of get prepped before a tour. And they'll always say you cannot take any pictures, and it's like, oh, good, I'm going to get some real new stuff that I've never seen before. Right. And there's going to be some trade secrets that I won't even be able to understand, but I'll be able to see how something is done differently than what I've thought of. I, I'm just, I'm always curious on how things are assembled and put together. Mm -hmm. and, and it's uh, amazing the, the machines that, uh, that these people operate. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Precision with which they do their work is just is fantastic. So and then I think you're going to learn to ask broader industry-based questions. Um, so when you're in an appointment, don't try to be the know-it-all. Be willing to say, tell me more about this. What's going on here? What, what are the challenges you're facing? Don't try to always answer everything. Ask things in those appointments and be friends with those people and, and allow them to teach you when you're in those um, when you're in those conversations so that you can learn and do more with that information. Good advice. We know it's valuable to become an industry expert. Take the time, especially when we're not traveling as much as we used to, you have a little bit more time now, put some of that into industry groups, industry expertise, uh, listening to, to, to speakers and building up your industry expertise on this. Uh, I do have a two minute video as a resource that will connect to uh, it's our, my two minute selling tip number 17, do something. Scott, anything that you have? Nope. I, I think um, the, your video is going to be very helpful. This segment of the get in the door podcast is brought to you by the art of prospecting your guide to getting in the door by Steve Cloyda. Steve Cloyda was known internationally for increasing salespeople's ability to make solid appointments with qualified prospects. You too can learn this essential skill by ordering a copy of his superb book, The Art of Prospecting, Your Guide to Getting in the Door. In this book, Steve shares the top strategies and tactics he has developed, implemented, and personally tested with more than one million sales and prospecting calls. You can get his book on the website theprospectingexpert.com. In addition, check out his other great online resources. Instant Sales Coaching, 
which will guide you through five online success modules, a guided prospecting process entitled Call Reluctance Transformer, and the Magnetic Selling Strategies Workbook, a detailed step-by-step -step guide to increasing your sales. Get any of these valuable resources at theprospectingexpert.com. So our golden nugget today, and, and folks, for those of you that are playing along at home, Bill doesn't know what it is. We usually share it before the show, so we're <laughs> able to respond to it. But guess where I got my quote from today? Pluto. Plato. Yes, oh. that's right. <laughs> I'm going to consistently draw from him. And when I get done with he's him, I'm dead. going to go to Ignatius and I'm going to start getting some dead. quotes from dead Ignatius. People. They're all dead. They're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this one is from Plato and it ties in so well to what you said about getting involved in industries. And I'm going to, I'm going to pick a word that is a substitute for industry. So see if you can pick out what word it is. One of the penalties of refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. Ah, well, we've seen that before. So what's the word that you can substitute? Politics. Politics. So yep. take out politics. Don't make it political, folks. I'll take your emails, whatever you want to write. But if you take that word out and you say, well, I want to get involved in an industry selling group or I want to get involved in uh, you know, an industry product knowledge group, get involved because if you yeah. don't other people that are going to be more i don't know useless you, they're they're <laughs> they're more passive i mean yeah. they're on they're, they're on salary and they don't get paid for selling stuff <laughs> well i think i think the well, i have seen a temptation and maybe it's always been there to people who just want to get sit back and take hmm. they don't want to share they don't want to participate they don't want to give to the organization. They just want to take from the organization. And we've been in organization, Scott, you and I have both been in organization yeah. and we've seen the takers and we've seen the givers mm -hmm. and the givers are a, a much more of a joy to work with. And the takers, we just put up with them as takers. I remember uh, sitting in a meeting with somebody because our, our PSA group uh, charges some money when we have breakfast meetings. And, and I said, well, you know, you, you should come to our, our meetings. He goes, I only go to free ones. Oh. And I thought, well, aren't you a taker? Yeah. And I've never seen you give. I've never seen you speak. You just, so you just, you're just a taker. And I, now I know who you are. Hmm. So uh, don't be a taker, be a participator as Plato said. And, and as Scott said, uh, I think that's great advice. I want to share one of my stories. When I was the president of PSA, I would always ask, so what brought you here today? And I remember one person said, well, my boss told me I should be here. I said, great, have some eggs and sit down. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, that was really the peak of your whole meeting was my boss told me should, I should be here. Yeah. So grab some eggs and sit down. Yep. Nothing is going to change when you leave the room today. I assure you. <laughs> I'm made to be here and I'll get through this thing. But get, you know, put the yeah. fee on the expense report, have some free bacon and eggs. Yeah, bacon. And, and, that, that'd come for and, the bacon. Yeah, I always say and, come for the bacon and stay for the speaker. So. Yeah, right. And so nothing, <laughs> nothing will change. In fact, I'll put that in the show notes. Uh, that's a blog that I wrote. So what made you decide to show up today? Well, my boss told me I should be here. Great exactly. motivation. Well, you know, at least you're there. Now are you going to change and, and listen? Yeah, that's, what are you going to do when you What leave? are you going to do now that you're there, right? That's right. the key. You can get all this information, including the blog that Scott just mentioned, uh, information on Tom Winninger, access to the video I mentioned, all this in the show notes at getinthedoorpodcast.com. Next week, we're going to cover Chapter 5 from Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz, How to Utilize the Power of Rational Thinking. And our topic, Bill, I would like to talk about successful onboarding. Oh, excellent. How can we bring salespeople up to speed as soon as possible? And I'm sure that you and I might have some different perspective on that. We might even debate it a little bit. We sometimes debate. Yeah. Go out and get better one skill at a time. Joyful selling. Joyful <laughs> selling.